Hi, Julie. It's great to get time with you again. Um, yeah, we had a great meeting uh, quite recently last year, and it's great to have you back on with HFS. Um, so what's what's new with Accenture coming off a pandemic, all the chaotic dynamics in our industry? You know, it's been an absolutely crazy year, right? So it feels like everybody wants to drive out costs. They want to innovate in a hurry. You know, Accenture's trying to fly the flag for transformational deals moving forward. So how would you sum up the whole state of play in our industry, Julie? It's a great question. I'd start with the clients because that's really what drives our industry. And I would say that on the one hand, clients are embracing more change. And I think things like Gen AI have helped that. But uh, what we're seeing is clients have an even deeper appreciation. And at the same time, in most industries, not all industries, there is a lot of constraints on the clients, right? In terms of their spending, uh, in terms of you know how much they can take on because they've been uh, in a lot in a state of change for some time, uh, and so for that, I think it really means that as an industry, and certainly what Accenture is really trying to drive is being the best partner for what we call total enterprise reinvention, right? That really is what clients have said, that they know they have to reinvent by tech, data, and AI. And thinking about ways, how do you do it faster? How do you make the best decisions on where to invest and when to invest? Uh, and that is, I think, a really important part of, of what, as an industry, we need to make sure we're focused on because we're still in the early stages of what really over the next several years will be a significant amount of spend that clients need to do. Uh, and, uh, and they're not gonna be able to avoid it. So we have to help them do that in the smartest, best way possible. Okay. So, uh, you know, let's, let's not avoid the elephant in the room. You guys have been driving a lot of narrative around the very real impact of generative AI. How does this factor into your thinking? How do you, how do you see this changing your business model? Right. Well, first of all, uh, we have embraced every technology shift over the last three decades or more that we've been in business. And what we have found is that when you embrace the shift, you win. And you win because by embracing the shift, you're able to help your clients create value from it, and you're able to then create value for Accenture. And so we have always succeeded when there is big technology change because we embrace it. And so that's how we're just flat out, that's how we think about it. Right. And, you know, I don't know if you know this, but our motto is embracing change, right? Like we talk about let there be change. That is our tagline in the market. Right. So that's where we start. So what we are aiming to do is to be the leader in both helping clients embrace Gen AI, which we think will lead to literally it's going to drive the, de the next decade of transformation. And I'll come back to that. And then for our own business, we want to be the leader in how you responsibly use Gen AI to deliver our services. And so that is our very, very clear ambition. And then as you just sort of take a step back, in 2021, you know, we were the first to say, here's the five key forces that, will, um, that every company needs to embrace. And one of them was total enterprise reinvention, which we defined as using tech, data, and AI to transform every part of the enterprise. Gen AI has accelerated the client's understanding, hasn't changed all the conditions that need to be there, the digital core, data, and it's made us even more relevant. So we're really excited about what's happening with Gen AI because we think it plays into our strengths. Okay, and you, you announced a very large, I think $3 billion investment into the space. Um, you know, you were very, deliberate with that message, I recall. So how do you envisage this going uh, in terms of investment, in terms of client adoption, in terms of, you know, obviously we'll see some fallout from this in the, in the next few months, but how do you envisage this going in the, in the medium term? 
Right. So our $3 billion investment uh, is an important part of how we're going to help create value for our clients. And so it includes what we're doing with talent. So we're training thousands of people, uh, you know, to be able to be relevant to Gen AI. We're creating assets and solutions to help our clients be able to do so faster. And we're investing in things like responsible AI, because that's an area where we can invest on behalf of our clients and help them accelerate and make sure that when they're trying to move fast, they're doing it responsibly. So it's a very important part of what we do, are doing to create value. And we always think about our investment as to where can we invest so our clients can benefit? And so those are the big areas that we think about for the investment. And then as you think about, you know, why is this then important in terms of the pace? It's super early and we're investing now so that as the technology matures, we're the first to be able to create value for our clients using it. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it really builds into the ecosystem conversations we were having last year and before, so this is fascinating. So do, do you think that, um, you know, white-collar jobs are under any sort of threat uh, with Gen AI? I mean, I, I've seen my 19-year-old nephew doing his entire chemistry undergrad on ChatGPT at the moment. Do you think our education system is going to be rocked with so many kids using this? And, you know, what do you think the whole you know, economic and educative fallout is going to be in the, in the sort of medium, longer term from this. Well, as my teenagers told me, mom, no one can get by using ChatGPT because they figured that out quickly. So I have to say that, um, uh, you know, no one, I don't, I don't think we're at least at this point in danger of our kids being able to skate through because the technology is able to be used to figure out who's using ChatGPT. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but let's, you know, think about what is Gen AI going to be able to do? So knowledge workers are the ones that will most be displaced in some cases, but in all cases, at least augmented, right? So there's going to be displacement, but there won't be a knowledge worker, I'd say five years from now, that isn't using some form of Gen AI to do their job better, right? So that's a big shift in that lots of technology changes haven't so directly affected all of our knowledge workers. It's also super exciting, you know, so I'm using some of these technologies now and, you know, myself, and you can start to see where it's going and, and you know, and how it can be really augmented. Uh, but that goes back to where I started earlier about this decade of transformation and total enterprise reinvention. Because if all knowledge workers will be at least augmented, that means that every part of the enterprise is going to have to work differently. Right? And that's just fundamental. And that's before you get to what people aren't really even talking about, which is how Gen AI combined with things like quantum are gonna change material sciences. They're gonna change biotech, right? So lots and lots of like the core parts of business are gonna change as well. So what, you know, you just kind of keep back to that Gen AI is a catalyst for a new level of reinvention over the next decade. Oh, that's fantastic. So if the duty suite in two years time we're going to sum up what the enterprise tech services world is going to look like. Um, what do you think she'd she'd say to you now, and, and how fast are things moving based on on these experiences? What I'd say is I don't know if it's two years or five years, um, but I think our industry will be reinvented, and I hope to lead that reinvention for our industry. That's a very good answer, and uh, well summed up, and. Uh, and I really look forward to sharing this with our, with our audience and our, and our Gen AI series, Julie. It's been an absolute pleasure getting some time with you today. Well, it's great to talk to you as always. I really appreciate it and uh, looking forward to seeing what happens over the next 12 months. Absolutely. Fantastic. 